What's up guys, Evil Deer here. Today I'm going to be playing Left 4 Dead again. However, this time I'm going to change a little bit. I'm not going to be teaching you weaponry words or words for different types of zombies. But I'm going to be teaching you um, the words for like body parts of the, um, the body parts of the body, I guess. God, that sounds terrible. Jesus. So yeah, I'm going to be teaching you body parts um, and stuff like that. So anyway, before I do get into my whole lesson, I just wanted to speak about a few things that have happened with my channel. And also... Um, a, one or two things that I've seen within the community as of recently. Now, for those who have just randomly dropped by on this video, I speak a created language called Esperanto. It's um, it's about 150 years old, spoken by 200,000 to 2 million plus speakers. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It was created to help with like intercultural communication. Now, for those who haven't watched my first videos, you're gonna want to go back and watch those first, the, the Left 4 Dead videos. I mean, just so if you hear some random words, um, you know what they mean because I've already had two previous videos and I've already taught a fair few words. So anyway, that's that little random spiel. Now, one thing that I've had happen recently is I a few weeks ago I released a video called I'm from Moyosuio, okay, and that means I'm just from cool land. And it's a funny story about that happened between me and a mate Esperantis. Um, and it, it actually got a lot of like reactions and stuff from a lot of Esperantis who sent me some messages going, this is really cool, I love the idea, let's make this a thing. And I didn't expect that much feedback on that particular video. So when I started getting all this feedback, I started thinking, hmm, Yes, let's make this a thing. So if you guys want to make this a thing, this Moyo Suio, the fake country from where Esperantists come from before we were completely dominated in World War II, leave me a message below. If you don't know what I'm on about, go watch that video, then come back and leave me a ah, goddamn explodula. Then come back and leave me a message. So, yeah, if you're interested, let me know. If I see enough interest, I will, I'll do something. I'll create a web page, I'll make a Wikipedia article. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe you'll even get pick, picked up by like, you know, Fox News or something. You know how great in their journalism they are, so that's a possibility. It's a real possibility. But anyway, we could create like a little micro-nation for Esperanto speakers. Not like a real one, but like a, a fake one just to mess with the world's head. Anyway, so that's that. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is I take part a lot in um, Red Edit groups. I talk in different ones, and there's an Esperanto one if you get dies and dies. If you guys don't know about, uh, you should go check it out. It's got like 3,000 plus members or something. But anyway, in there today, I saw a, well, I didn't see, someone replied to one of my messages saying I should check out the social media platform. It's in Esperanto. Now, it's called verduloid.com. Uh, and verdulo just means green people. It's a combination of verda, which is an adjective that means green, and ulo, which is, as you guys probably should know, um, the suffix for person. So verdulo is just like a common way of saying Esperantist without saying Esperantist. It's just green people because for some reason we've got this fetish with green. There's probably a historical reason there. I don't know what it is. So yeah, go check it out. It's a mixture between like Facebook and um, Twitter. It's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. The interface is very basic. Um, you can tell it's still in its infant stages. However, there seems to be a, a small but growing community on there. I've signed up. To sign up, anyone can sign up, but you've got to be approved by, it looks like, an admin, and they do, like, a small little Esperanto test. Not, like, language test, but just ask you a random question, like, who created Esperanto, and that's just random, in case you don't know. If you don't know that, um, that... You're an Esperantist, you know that, everyone knows that if you're an Esperantist. Anyway, so yeah, uh, go go check it out, I'll leave a link down in the description, it looks pretty cool. I'm signed up, my name will be Evil Deer. Uh, you, you can follow me if you want. I, yeah, just support the community, man, support the community. It, the more that we support these Esperanto initiatives, rather than using the big websites like, you know, Facebook and stuff, even though I've got a Facebook page, which some of you guys might see or might not have, um, I still like to support these initiatives like the Esperanto Games and stuff like that. Anyway, I've like gone on for ages about that topic. I'm almost at the end of the first level. I haven't taught you guys one single word yet. Actually, I am at the end of the first level. What a... S Jesus, I am good. Okay, so I'm basically just going to close off this door. I'm going to cut it here and come back directly in the next level. And I'm back. So, that didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. Now, I'm just going to pick up some Munizio, which is ammo. I've got all that. I've got Sanigillo. My health is looking fine. Let's pop the cherry and go out the door. Okay, let's take out that zombie. So, I guess, um... Whoa, look at them all. Look at the muscle of the zombie. 
So th I guess the first word I'm going to teach you is the word for leg because I like to shoot the legs off of these guys. Then again, I'm actually shooting their arms off. Nah, there's the legs. <laughs> okay, so the le the word for leg in Espano is crudo and it's called K-R-U-R-O. Now, that's just the leg. It means exactly the same as in English, the full leg. However, the reason I say that is because there's actually another word for leg in Esperanto, and it's gumbo. Now, I see people using this word gumbo when they should be using crudo. Now, you're probably thinking, why is there two words for leg? Well, that is an interesting historical thing from what I understand. I could be completely false in this bit of information I'm giving you now. If I am, point, point it out, correct me. Um, you better come with proof and facts, man, otherwise I won't believe a word, say. No, just joking, just joking. So, yeah, the history behind crudo and gumbo is an interesting one. There is a dictionary slash encyclopedia in Esperanto. I don't know if it's really an encyclopedia. Well, then again, it might be. It doesn't matter. It's called PIV, and it's kind of... I think it stands for Plena Illustrita Votado. Um, I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't, I'm not very good with acronyms. Uh, that is kind of like the standard and has been for a very long time for word usage and stuff like that in the Esperanto community. There's a lot more books and stuff out there now, but it's still very prestigious. I don't know if that's the correct word, but it it's authoritative in some sense. Anyway, back I think it was in the 80s, it could have been another time, there was a French author, I believe he was French, oh jeez, I could be making everything up right now, I don't know, but there was an author, or an editor, sorry, who took over, and what he did is he added like a whole heap of not needed or rarely like used words with French origin into the dictionary. So one of those words was gumbo. So he brought in this word for leg when we already had a very well established since like, I don't know, dinosaur times in Esperanto. Dinosaur times is like 150 years ago, just in case you don't know. Um, and tried to replace crudo. Now, I don't know why he bothered. But this word now, gumbo, was in the dictionaries and obviously it's kind of set itself in usage. Uh oh, we have a Tunkulo around here somewhere. Yeah, okay, let me just kill that dude off first. So he doesn't get all angry and decide to kill me. Okay, I'll get back to this random gumbo crudo thing in a second. Let's just deal with the Tunkulo. Because he seems to be in a rush to kill everyone. Uh oh! Hey, thanks for that. I just got airborne straight over the top of that. Oh god, no, 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 no! Goddamn cheeseburgers! Feck, I'll see. Okay, someone get me up. Oh. Ah, oh, goddamn, I knew that was gonna happen. That's why I popped my, like, little healthy thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly heal up, then we'll go ahead. So, yeah. Kururo means leg and gumbo means leg. Now there is some people that debate and say that there's a difference between the two, but there isn't really a difference. Like some say, oh, it's like technical, and then others say, no, kururo only means the bottom of the leg, while gumbo means the whole leg. And I don't know. Like everyone uses kururo, no one uses gumbo, except for people who've just gone to the dictionary, to a dictionary, and looked up leg and just happened to find gumbo. It's not the standard usage, so don't use it. Anyway, that's my random little rant about those two words. I'm sure someone's gonna, like, in the comments below say, No! It's got this meaning! But, whatever. Whatever. I'll take you on. I'll take you on. I'll take you out back behind the Esperanto flag. Whatever. Um, oh god, I keep shooting this guy in the back. By the way, the word for back in Esperanto, since I'm shooting people in the back, is dorso. Easy word to remember, just think dorsal fin. Okay? Dorso. It's the same for both humans and animals. They're all dorso on the back. Now, I just shot that guy in the head. The word for head in Esperanto is capo, capo. Um, easy to remember, just think of like a toothpaste cat, cat, or any form of cat. I don't know why I picked toothpaste. That's kind of weird. But yeah, so think of just a cat, and there you go, you've got capo. So, let's move ahead, let's move right ahead. Um, let's just go up here, up the stupado, which was the stairs. You would know that if you've gone in my previous video. Oh god! Why did I do that? Why did I do that? That was a bad idea. I just attacked the Plendulo. And I've got no health pack. I am the worst player by far, apart from myself. Wait, no, that makes no sense. Okay, oh yeah, so I remember this spot in the game. We're gonna be a little bit careful around here because um, once you turn on the button, like a billion zombies come and they try to kill you. Okay, um, I'm just gonna grab this here. I'm gonna put this right here. 
So, because what happens is when you shoot this, it sets on fire and it kills everything, and it's all good, it's all sweet. So let's just activate this. So we have a machine puffilo here, which is a machine gun. Now, shoot that guy right there in the waist. By the way, the word for waist in Esperanto is palio. Now, I can't think of anything in English you can really associate that with except the tail, but people's tails on the back. So that doesn't really work, unless we're talking about the male tail, which is on the front. <laughs> that makes no sense, you're an idiot. So yeah, we've got Talio as the waist. Let's shoot this guy right here in the trudo. He's gone down. Whoop. Let's shoot this guy in his giant mano. The word mano in Esperanto means hand. Okay, mano. Um, don't know what you can associate that with. You're just going to have to memorize that one. Sorry, guys. Root learning it is. Ah! Ah! Fido! Fido! Just got burnt by the fire. Jeez, I'm terrible bad. Ah, I'm just stuck here. Come on, fire. Go away. Okay, cool. Moving ahead. Moving ahead. So, let's see. Grab some more munizio. Now, let's move around here. Here. Not all good. Let's go down here. I'm going to shoot this guy right in the fronto. The fronto is this part of the head. It's the forehead. And if you're going to shoot someone, you shoot them in the frontal so it doesn't cause too much pain. I'm assuming it doesn't cause too much pain, because it's like shot straight in the brain. The word for brain is turtable. Turtable. See, we're on a roll now. Now we got the words down, Pat. What is that guy doing? Or is he like way ahead of me? Oh, I think he's way ahead of me somehow. Oh, I think he jumped off the building. That's what he did. I didn't even think about that. I'm going around this giant ass circle, and this guy's like, Oh, come on, Mr. Loser. Get over here. I know you're doing a Let's Play and you're teaching us Rhino at the same time, but that's no that's no excuse for your bad multitasking abilities. Okay. Jack Ripple alerted the Horde. Well, that can't be good. Okay, anyway. Pretty much reached the end of this one. I'm just going to shoot all these zombie just now. Um, I didn't teach too many Esperanto words in this one. Sorry about that, guys. I did teach a few. I'm going to shoot these guys right in the butt. By the way, the word for butt, might as well get a few last words in. Oh, God. Is postage, postage, And it's a combination of two words. Am I going to die before the end? I am not seriously going to die right before the end, am I? Oh. Oh. Chuck that over there. I almost died right before the end of this. That would have went really bad. Okay, let me in here. Let me in. Let me in. Oh, come on. <laughs> Someone pick me up. Please, please. I'm doing this game no justice. I'm doing it absolutely no justice right now. Someone. Wow. I am so sorry, guys. At least I've got two pistols. By the way, I didn't teach that in my previous lesson. Um, the way to say, like, dual pistols is duoble pistoloi. Okay, let's get in here. Finally. End the game. Done. Sorted. Okay, guys, so if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, give it a like. Leave comments below. When you guys leave comments, it gives me ideas of what you want to see. So leave some comments and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. And if not, well, you might end up playing with me online and I'll get you all killed. <laughs>